Hello everybody and welcome. It's Morgana here with this week's tutorial. Today I'll be demonstrating for you this beautiful uh, Edric in flight against a beautiful pink rosy hued sunlit backdrop. My first step was to sketch out our little bird here. Uh, you can see I've just uh, drawn him out freehand in pencil. I was working from this particular uh, reference photo which I found online on the website pixabay.com. I'll pop a link in the video description. Uh, and then once I had drawn out my bird, I just filled him in with some drawing gum uh, just to protect the white of the paper whilst I'm painting. I use Perio drawing gum but um, any old masking fluid will do. Uh, I also drew in a few sort of reeds and flowers down below to sort of give myself a map of uh, where I want the foliage to be later on. Uh, my colours are on screen at the moment. I'll uh, pop a list in the video description down below as well uh, of all my sort of paper colours equipment and all of that sort of malarkey. <laughs> but for now uh, I'm just wetting the paper all over with some clean water uh, because we're going to put in the first background wash and I want to use a uh, wet and wet technique for this so we want to get that paper nice and wet and uh, once you've covered it with water just leave it for a minute or two to settle in. Now I'm just beginning with my first colour. Uh, I'm using a large flat wash brush to introduce some really really light uh, raw sienna is my first colour and I'm going to mix this with a pink I'm using Opera Rose, which is a, a wonderfully bright and vibrant pink uh, when it's used on its own. Here I'm mixing it with the raw sienna on the paper, uh, which is sort of dulling it down slightly to a much softer, uh, sort of a rosy, almost salmon-y uh, pink by the, by the end of it. Uh, as you'll see, sort of progress of these uh, colours mixing and marrying beautifully on the paper is actually... Uh, really really good fun. So as you can see I'm just taking the paint from the top left corner and bringing it down towards the bottom right. Uh, this is just going to mimic the pattern of the sunbeams. I want to come sort of shining in beautifully from that top left side so I'm keeping my brush strokes uh, going in that direction to just make sure that uh, that's the impression that you get from the paint and just slowly begin to build up the colour that you want. Uh, I started very pale uh, and, and just slowly sort of layering up the pink and yellow uh, just to get those lovely soft tonal hues that aren't too pale, they still stand up. Uh, because bearing in mind that the egret we're going to paint in is um, a white bird, our little egret, uh, so he needs a relatively strong background for the lovely white feathers to uh, stand out properly. So while we want this lovely pale sunlit background, I do want um, a decent amount of colour, which is why you can see I'm adding in a little more pink. You can see, oh, bumped my little companion there. <laughs> you can see it's uh, really quite a vibrant pink, but it does uh, soften beautifully with uh, a touch of yellow. Raw sienna is usually my yellow of choice here, but you can use uh, whichever yellow is your favourite. And you can see I'm just reapplying, always keeping my brush strokes from top to bottom just to make sure we get that directionality uh, in the first wash. So now I've decided to introduce a bit of a bolder colour. Um, I began mapping in the foliage down below before deciding that actually uh, I wanted a stronger colour in the background. So uh, this is uh, some Van Dyke brown I just started putting in the foliage with some really soft brown uh, but then I decided that I needed a stronger colour so uh, I'm just going to uh, wash over that again <laughs> with my large brush. Now 
and you can see this is um, a lovely warm brown that I'm using today. I think tonally it goes really nicely uh, with the combination of the raw sienna and the opera rose pink. They combine really nicely. You can see I've just added a touch of pink there and it's created this really beautiful soft colour which actually, you know, they, they harmonise really well I think and they blend really easily as well. And I'm just putting in this darker uh, layer of colour along the uh, sort of bottom of the page, bottom half. So this is going to be the sort of backdrop for our foliage and of course our lovely egret, so I wanted a nice strong colour. Now I've got that background colour in that I'm pleased with, so you're just using the flat side of the brush again, just map in a little bit of extra background foliage. Uh, with the water that is still on the paper, this is just going to soften down and just give a little, lovely sort of soft uh, diffused backdrop uh, when it time comes to paint in uh, the uh, rest of the leaves and the plants and the reeds. And now for the sunbeams. You can see the paper is still wet, luckily. This is Milford paper, so um, it's quite easy to work with. Uh, it remains uh, sort of workable for a lot longer than other watercolour papers I've worked with. You can see I'm just using the flat brush here to just start pulling some sunbeams down from that top left corner. And by basically what I've done is uh, washed off the brush and then dried it to uh, very, very lightly damp with some tissue. So the damp brush is going in and with the swipes that I'm making, it's actually pulling the paint up and leaving these lovely sort of pale washed out lines. And so we get that lovely impression of the light streaming down from this top corner. into that lovely soft diffused background colour which is starting to pick up on the brush and be taken up to the top as well so we're getting a lovely harmony here uh, in the background colours. Just after every few, uh, every few strokes of the brush as well I'm uh, pulling the brush back and drying it off again on the tissue to make sure it doesn't become too uh, sort of waterlogged or stained and then going back in and creating those lovely soft pale lines again. So as you can see where it's quite wet uh, on the paper, you can create the white line with the brush, but then the paint sort of closes back in over it. So depending on how strong you want your uh, sun rays to be, uh, just keep going over, do as much or as little as you like. This for me is good. Uh, this is about the point that I wanted it, didn't want it to be too harsh, but you can still see uh, now that the paint is completely dry, we still got this lovely impression uh, of the sunlight, these lovely soft sort of white paint and gold sort of rays coming down from that corner uh, as the backdrop for our painting today. So with the first layer done and completely dried, uh, I'm beginning to put in some foreground texture, just very lightly to begin with with my foliage brush. This is basically just a very, very soft mix of uh, all the colours on the palette. So uh, a little pink, a little brown and um, a little yellow. Just really, really diluted down with a lot of water to begin with, just to uh, create the uh, shape first of where I want the, uh, the leaves and the foliage to be. So now I'm just going back over where I've already put down that really, really light texture with the uh, with the foliage brush and just beginning to deepen the colour a little bit, taking up a little more colour on my brush, a little stronger, stronger colour here with some uh, extra pink and yellow and just beginning to build up those really soft, uh, natural looking shapes. 
Uh, I'm using my Matthew Palmer Tree and Texture Brush here, but of course which, use whichever brush you like, whatever you have, uh, a stippling brush or something like that uh, would also work well here, just to create those sort of soft, fluffy looking almost textures. We're just trying to build up some really lovely loose foliage down the bottom of the page here. And now just using a liner brush to start putting in uh, some tall shapes as well, some lovely long reeds and grasses popping up out of the foliage here. I'm using a ProArt uh, Synthetic Sword Liner for this because uh, it's one of my favourite brushes uh, at the moment. But of course um, a small sort of round brush or even a narrow flat brush here would work just as well. Uh, or um, a mop brush with a really, you just want something with a nice delicate point. Uh, or a rigger brush as well, one of those very long thin ones uh, would also work perfectly. Not being too uh, sort of cautious or careful here, uh, we just want to map in some soft shapes. Um, I'm doing this over the top of where I've just stippled in some foliage and as you can see from the paint going on it's still lightly damp so I'm actually not getting thin sharp lines for the most part. Uh, the um, majority of the line as I'm putting it in is softly diffusing slightly uh, where the paper is already damp from the uh, the stippling foliage that I've just put on so this is um, for me at least this is a nice way of getting those lovely sharp uh, impressions of some uh, some reeds or grasses popping up but without them standing out too harshly we're still getting a lovely uh, little bit of softness in this uh, foreground at the moment. And if you're worried about having a bit too much dark paint on there, you can just dab, as you can see there with a the tissue, just gently, and it will lift up excess water and uh, any heavy excess paint that you've got on there. Uh, but only dab lightly, otherwise if you press very hard uh, with the tissue, then you may end up taking up uh, quite a lot of paint and leaving sort of a white space underneath, which obviously can work to your advantage in certain cases, but um, that's not the effect I was looking for today uh, with the tissue just dabbing up a little bit of excess water there before putting on some more paint. You can see how I've been working through from light to dark colours here. Um, I'm using a slightly stronger uh, concentration of colour. This is Van Dyke Brown mixed again with just a touch of pink to soften it. Uh, and I'm just beginning to put in this really uh, strikingly dark foliage Basically all we're going to do here along the, uh, the, along the bottom of the paper is just to begin building up a really dense but natural looking uh, selection of grasses and natural looking loose foliage just to create essentially this lovely soft backdrop for our beautiful flying bird.
So as you can see, I'm just uh, using the liner brush uh, and some little sharp strokes here to create some more standout foliage uh, along the bottom, along the front there. Um, that central one did uh, spread a little bit too much for my liking, so I've just dabbed out some of the excess paint with a tissue uh, off camera. Hopefully you can see the difference there. But um, I've dried that off. Uh, rather than waiting for it to dry, I did give it a little blast with my hairdryer just to uh, encourage the drying process. And now I'm back with the stippling brush uh, and some more Van Dyke Brown. And you can see I'm not only stippling, but I'm actually using the brush to uh, sweep upwards in these um, sort of short, fairly dramatic strokes to uh, get and some more uh, different textures in there. Basically just want a nice variety of interesting textures so that when you look at this foreground, it does look like a natural sort of jumble of beautiful plants and foliage rather than something that's been sort of laboriously put in and looks too sort of um, regimented. Just love dabbing these little, tiny little hints and little whispers of uh, <laughs> colour up into the sky, starting to give the impression of perhaps some little seed pods bursting and spreading out these lovely little flecks of dark colour into the uh, beautiful shafts of light we've created in that first background wash. So as you can see, I've layered up a slightly darker colour and the, the name of the game is layering at the moment. <laughs> you can do as much or as little as you like. This is something that I really like uh, doing in, with these demonstrations is obviously this is how I painted this particular painting, but watching these uh, techniques you can uh, pick and choose which ones you actually use in your own work. So. Um, I go through several steps and processes here of layering up my sort of foreground foliage until I get it to the richness and the sort of complexity that uh, I'm looking for. But of course you can uh, take it even further if you want, but it's really sort of dense uh, tangle of hedgerow perhaps. Uh, or you can uh, choose to uh, do really, really light foliage instead. Uh, only go through about half of this process and create something uh, with a lot of light that lets more light in perhaps create something more standout in the background. Uh, so much to work with here, but this, uh, this one's really, uh, really good fun to paint and I think there's a lot of uh, room for different interpretations. The colour scheme as well could be um, you know, there's room for interpretation there. Uh, I'm really enjoying this sort of lovely soft sort of rose tinted uh, colour palette at the moment, which the Opera Rose has given the painting. Uh, but of course you should, you could change this to sort of a clear dawn sort of palette of uh, blues and golds and greens. Uh, you could do anything you like. <laughs> but for now, what I'm going to do is remove the masking fluid. Uh, so I've completely dried off everything on the painting at the moment is dry. I've given it another blast with the hairdryer off camera uh, and now I'm just using my fingertips to begin rubbing off the uh, bottom part of the masking fluid where I've put it in for the foliage. You can see there we've got these lovely white patterns emerging. Um, I've left the bird for now because I'm going to focus on him later. I've also had to put another strip of masking tape along the bottom of my painting because I started <laughs> inadvertently uh, lifting that up a bit so I've just taped it back over and down uh, and now all I'm going to do is add a little bit of detail to where I've uh, lifted up the masking fluid and left uh, these lovely white outlines. They're very very beautiful I think but they also look slightly 
um, out of place because obviously they're laying on top of these layers and layers of foliage that we've already put in. So what I'm going to do now is use uh, my liner brush again uh, and some more Van Dyke Brown. But of course you could use a fine detail brush or a round brush, something like that, to just start adding a little bit of texture in and around these white lines. I don't want to cover them up completely. I do want some white peeping through, but I'm going to start layering over them a little bit uh, and again putting a little bit of texture into those little fluffy seed heads uh, just to make them look a bit more realistic and to sort of settle them into the landscape to make it seem like they're not just sort of plumped on the front, which it looks like at the moment. So I'm just going to try and uh, embed them a little bit, a little bit more in the painting. So now I'm happy with the foreground. Uh, I've removed the masking fluid from the Edrit from our beautiful bird. You can see we've got this bright white outline. It stands out really nicely against those sort of rose tinted hues of the backdrop. Uh, and now I'm just going to shade in a little bit of detail. I don't want to lose too much of the white because of course he is a white bird. Um, but because of the tints and tones we've got in this painting, I'm using a soft pink colour to uh, start to put a little bit of shading uh, along the underside of this wing that is closest to us, the viewer, uh, as you know with it being lifted up and the light coming down from above you would naturally have a little bit of shadow here. So that's what I'm just doing with this pink colour. I don't want to uh, make it too dark because you're in danger of losing the white uh, and in my reference photo which I popped up uh, at the start of the video. Um, it is, uh, all the colours are quite dark, the bird is in quite heavy shadow, uh, which, so I've changed that using my uh, <laughs> my artistic licence. I've lightened this all up a bit. We've got the sunlight coming in from the top, so I'm able to put this soft pinkish uh, rose coloured shadow along the underside of the bird's wing. And here I'm just striping in a little bit of detail on those uh, lovely long pin feathers, which you can usually see individually when the bird's wing is spread uh, just to give the impression of shadow but also you can usually see the light coming in and uh, this almost translucent brightness of the feathers you can sort of see them overlapping and laying across one another uh, in that sort of beautiful concentric pattern so that's all I'm going to be doing with my really really fine brush is just adding little bits and bobs of detail trying to maintain as much of that white as possible whilst also uh, making sure that the bird has enough detail to, to stand out. And I'm using lamp black to fill in the leg detail and I'll be using it for the dark coloured beak as well and the eye. Um, this again you will need your finest brush for, <laughs> finest and most delicate, or if you are uh, uncomfortable with using a brush to do something uh, this sort of delicate such as the eye of a very small bird, uh, you could always use um, an ink pen or a, a sort of a smudge proof fine liner instead, something like that would work equally well I think.
And now just using this black again still, just diluted it down quite a bit so it's more softer and more grey, just to add a little extra shading and a little detail on these wing feathers. So now I'm just going to add some final touches using some opaque uh, white gouache. As you can see it's Winsor & Newton brand that I'm using. It's uh, really nice to uh, work with. And all I'm doing is using my texture brush again and I've mixed up, I've just softened down the white with a little water just to make it a bit more malleable, more usable. I'm just dabbing it on with my texture brush. I'm going to create these little white, uh, soft white clusters of uh, flowers just uh, popping up here and there uh, because our foreground ended up being quite dark uh, which I'm enjoying the darkness but I wanted this little extra little pop uh, of colour so just dabbing in those little clusters of white here uh, the foliage brush is a really useful tool for this sort of thing it sort of naturally seems to form the shape of a uh, head of beautiful uh, sort of cowslips perhaps or or a little bit of elder popping up those lovely sort of classic clusters of beautiful white summer bloom. Just popped all those in there, making sure they've got their appropriate uh, stems to be uh, <laughs> popping up out of. And now as an extra little finishing touch, I'm adding some splatter detail using uh, the fan brush. Uh, I've dipped it in some quite loose paint and I'm just tapping it against the handle of another paintbrush and creating these lovely splatters up the page. Uh, I'm doing some brown splatters first. This is just, for me, I love this. I love this sort of this impression that this foliage here is releasing some seeds, perhaps. Uh, some lovely fluffy little seeds into the atmosphere. They're sort of glinting against that sunlight coming down uh, and just, yeah, just lifting up. I think it gives it that lovely little extra touch of atmosphere. I'm also splattering on some white, uh, which is, it looks quite bright at the moment, but because I've mixed it with a little bit of extra water, it's going to dull down slightly. Uh, I also mixed the white uh, with a little bit of the last little bit of pink on my palette and decided to splatter that onto for good measure. <laughs> just love it when you see you know if you're out in nature and you can see sort of little motes of dust or seeds or perhaps little uh, insects rising up caught glittering in the sunlight uh, that's the impression we're just trying to give here with this last little detail so here we are with the finished painting uh, I hope you love it as much as I do I really enjoyed painting this uh, I particularly am going to be making a note of this colour combination for future use because I think they all work really well together. Uh, so thank you everybody for watching. I really uh, appreciate you if you're here. Um, please leave a like or subscribe to my channel if you're new. I'd love to have you around. Uh, please also feel free to check out my Patreon page which I will link below uh, for loads of extra videos, uh, a whole dump of uh, reference photos that you can use for your own artwork. Uh, all sorts of good stuff. So thank you again everybody for watching. Uh, I hope you have a lovely rest of the day wherever you are and whatever you're up to and I'll see you all again in the next video.